Hi, I'll be playing the part of Richard Sanders for this performance. You guys ever hear of an illusion? You ever see that usually it's those big illusions with the boxes and stuff like that? That's the David Copperfield budget. I'm Richard Sanders. That's mine. But it's a really cool illusion. Uh, it's something with a couple of pieces of rope. Each rope is a different size. We've got a small, a medium, and a large. These can be examined by the folks in the audience. That's a real large, that's a real small, that's a real medium. I'm going to show you an illusion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cause these three ropes to look like they're the same size. Watch this. A little something I picked up uh, from the Harry Potter School of Magic. Look, <laughs> the ropes stretch. to the exact same size. Don't take my word for it. Take a look for yourself. That's the small piece. That's the medium piece. And that's the long piece. Now I realize this might be a little confusing. Too many things. I'm going to get rid of one rope. We'll just make it really easy to follow. Just the two ropes. Simple stuff. You know what, in fact, let's just use one rope. That'll probably be even easier. <laughs> Now, I realize you might have missed that, so I'll start over. Remember, two ropes we had a second ago, right? And then those two ropes became one rope. Okay. Forget the rope. Forget the rope. Just watch the ends. Okay? That'll be simple. Just watch the ends. Keep your eye on them. Make sure they do not leave. <laughs> Did that just happen? Um, I'll get rid of that. I don't think anyone noticed. This is just, <laughs> I can't do any magic with this. Can you just say stop? stop? Right there. Perfect. Great spot this time of year. I'll put the ends back on the rope. See, now we can continue. In fact, you could examine it. It's an examinable piece of rope. The spectators can check it out all they want. And I'm going to show you guys how this trick is done. How do you get the ends to stick? What is it, crazy rope? No, it's real. But a little static. Look what happens. You get a little static on the rope, and the ends will join. Look, a little static here little static here, and the two ends join together. It's real simple. <laughs> um, of course, you're going to need some extra ends. I have some here. Look. Find a good spot, then take the ends, place them on the rope. Simple as that. Um, as a matter of fact, it's actually not the ends that bother me. It's uh, the middle coming off. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me put that back right about there. <sighs> Watch. Perfect. Now remember, folks, this is an illusion with a piece of rope. Actually, it's an illusion with two pieces of rope. Actually, it's an illusion with three pieces of rope. Three pieces of rope that you examined at the beginning. There was the small, yeah, that's it, uh, the medium, and the large. Really, small, medium, and large. I know you can't tell right here, but um, here, if I hold it up, see, that's the small. I mean, that's the large. Yeah, can you tell? See, that's the large, that's the medium, that's the small, and that's the trick. Thank you. Peace out. Three ropes have been examined. You got your small, your medium, your large. Going to create the illusion, show you guys an illusion where all three ropes will become the same size. Watch. Just going to hold the ends up here so you could see them. Here's how I create the illusion. I hold the ends up here. See? Same size. No, these optical illusion things, they really make it look real. See? It almost looks like the small rope is the same size as a medium, and the medium is the same size as a long. Is that too confusing? Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get rid of a rope. We'll make this super easy to follow. We'll just use two ropes. Watch. Two ropes. Actually, we'll use one. This will be even easier to follow. Actually, you remember a second ago? I had two ropes. Actually, they're not the right size. We'll start over. Just a piece. Um, you know what? Forget the rope. Just watch the ends. Is that close enough? <laughs> Excuse me. I'll just tie that back on. I don't think anybody noticed. And when I say tie it back on, I really mean tied back on. Just a piece of rope. Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, the ends are in the wrong spot. They should be here. That's better. Actually, you know what? This is an illusion. Um, actually, it's the middle 
excuse me, the middle should be here. That's better. This is an illusion done with one, two, three ropes. Remember those three ropes you examined at the beginning? Each one is a different size, especially this one, this one, and this one. Howdy, here's another routine. Um, we're going to suppose you've already counted the ropes, etc. You have three different size ropes. You do your magic move, ba da ba da ba da boo. You come down to three ropes the same size. Count them out. You've got uno, dos, tres pieces of rope. This is already, for, this is already an amazing part for the layman. You're now going to take it a step further. You're going to continue the routine. So look, I'm going to put one away. Uh, we'll just use two ropes. Two ropes. Actually, you know what? We'll use one. Now, okay, you've probably seen, everyone's seen that, that trick where the magician cuts the rope and makes one rope out of it. It's old. It's old now. So I'll tell you what. Let's do something a little more obscure, something you don't usually see. I'm going to cause the ends of the rope and the middle of the rope to change places. What do I mean by that exactly? Let me show you. Watch. Here's the ends. Here's the middle. Watch them change places. Okay, uh, maybe we need something to take it up a notch. So look, watch the ends and the middle change places. Okay, that was a little fast. You weren't ready for that. I'll do it again. Look, I'll place the ends into my pocket. Real simple. Watch the ends and the middle change places. Now, spectators can examine the rope. It's a great point. But I'll tell you what. Let me show you how this works. People think it's trap doors, mirrors. No. This works with static electricity. Let me show you. Watch. Those ends are attracted by static. Get a little static and watch. A little static here. A little static here. And the two ends join together. It's crazy. In fact, the only way to get them apart now is um, I need extra ends. Oh, I have some here, actually. I'm a professional. See? Extra ends. Find a good spot. All I do is take the ends, tie them on the rope like that. See, it looks completely normal. You can go about your everyday business, and when you're ready, you can use the rope. <laughs> I know what you're saying. That's nuts, man. It almost looked like you saw me take the ends off the rope like this and then literally put them back on. That would be impossible. And it is impossible. You can't do that, especially since I'm missing the middle. Excuse me. Let me put that back on right back on perfectly. This is all an illusion. Now remember, it's an illusion with one, two, three pieces of rope. Three pieces of rope you examined at the very beginning. And in fact, I'm going to hand one piece to my cameraman. Watch him hold it. Ooh, that's very nice. Uh, I'm going to hold this one here. So cameraman, you're actually holding the long piece. I'm holding the medium piece here. And that piece in the middle, that's the little piece. I'll break the illusion and show you. There's the middle. There's the small. There's the medium. You've got the large. And that's what we call an illusion. Thank you. An illusion. We're going to create an illusion today with just some pieces of rope. I'll show you what I mean. I have a couple of pieces here. Uh, different sizes. We have uh, a small one kind of a medium-sized one, and a large one. I'm going to hold them right up here. No funny business, look. Three ends of the rope held right here in full view. And watch what happens. The ropes are now the same size. That's the small one. That's the medium one. That's the long one. Any questions? Hold on, we'll do more. Look, I'll take this rope, put it away. We'll just use two ropes. This will be much easier to follow. Watch the two. One. Okay. You know what? I'm sorry. This is great, except uh, the ends here are in the wrong place. It should be up here. That's better. In fact, here, look. I'm going to tie the ends together like that so you can see exactly 
where the ends have been tied. And I'm going to cut the rope right about here with my magic fingers. Watch. That's perfect. <laughs> now we have a rope that's been cut right here in the middle. We have two um, fairly, e those aren't really even. Excuse me. Let me fix those. That's better. Two even pieces. You know what? Let's start back at the beginning with just a piece of rope. In fact, remember I had no ends? Put those away. <laughs> um, can you say stop? Right there. Perfect. I'll grab the ends, put them back on. There we go. And this is not a tricky rope. You can examine it. It's totally normal. The whole thing works with static electricity. I'll show you. Watch. Static here. Static here. The two ends join together. Really. If you want to put ends on, just get extra ones. I carry them right here. Look. We'll find a good floor and put them on. But remember, this is all an illusion. It's an illusion done with one, two, three ropes. You examined at the very beginning. I'll get that. Don't worry about it. That's one. That's two. That's three ropes of different sizes. There's a large. There's a small. And there's a medium. And that's a trick. So the ropes have been examined. You have your small rope, you have your medium rope, and you have your long rope. They've all been examined by the spectators. You tell them, you're going to show them an actual live illusion right in front of them, like you see on TV, but right in front, using the small rope, the medium rope, and the long rope. To create the illusion, all you have to do is hypnotize the audience like this. You're under a deep state of hypnosis. Really. If you look at the ropes, it almost looks like all the ropes are the same size. It almost looks like the small rope is the same size as the medium rope, which is the same size as the long rope. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me, let me get rid of one of the ropes. We'll just do it with two. This will be easier to follow. Um, an illusion with two ropes. In fact, two becoming one. I know. When you see an illusion, you think of big fancy props. I got them. A cherry red plastic ring, solid. They can examine this. I'm going to show you an illusion. Watch. I'm going to take the two rope, the uh, one rope, two ends, I mean, tie them together, like so. I'm going to take the ring. Watch this knot. It's kind of a slip knot because if I slip it through, the ring goes right on. Let me show you that again. Look, it's the knot. I can pull it right through. I'll show you that again, real close up. Watch the knot, and the ring passes right through. Now think about this. The only way to really get this ring off of the rope is to untie the ends and slide it off. But if I really want this ring to stay on the rope, then I simply have to remove the ends. Now you can't pull it off. The only way is to grab the ends, slide the ring off, and that's how you do it. But you remember, this is all an illusion. It's an illusion done with, let's cut that, one, two, three ropes. Three ropes that you examined at the very beginning. Uh, there was the long rope, the medium rope, and the short rope. And that's the illusion. This, of course, is the Fiber Optics headquarters, uh, located in a secret location somewhere in North America. I can't tell you exactly where it is, but it's kind of on a map. If you're looking in North America, it's right here. So let's get into the new moves. We're going to start with uh, a really, really fun move. Uh, this is um, it's a move where you, you apparently take the ends, which are they can be held in your mouth or sticking out of a pocket, and they visibly will uh, kind of meld or uh, become one onto the rope you're holding. So, demonstration. 
rolls on the rolls, and it loops, and come over, and boom. This is a killer, killer uh, for laymen. So this is very simple, using some of the techniques you've learned in the original fiber optics. Um, by the way, a lot of the moves that I'm going to explain in this, I'm assuming you've already looked at uh, the original footage for fiber optics and learned all the basic moves. So you're going to be holding the, t the uh, piece of rope as if it's two ends like this, and you're going to pop it in your mouth or crow. I don't hold it with my tongue or my teeth. You don't want to get this wet. Just in between my lips, kind of hold them like that. So this way you don't get the rope wet, and it's fairly hygienic for the uh, general populace. Hmm. Take that out for now. This rope held here, you're going to do the endless loop move. You're then going to stop right about here. You're going to get approximately the amount of rope that this would be. So this comes out to about here. So I'm going to stop it about here. It doesn't have to be exact, but approximately. And I'm going to grip it like this between my index finger and second finger. Same thing on the other side, except that I'm holding it right here at the end here. But from here, it looks completely normal. Okay? This is in the mouth. I'm going to come over. And I'm going to grab each end like this, in between my thumb and the top of my index finger like that, on each side. A mirror image on each side, okay? Uh -huh. Here. And now, when I pull away from my mouth, I'm, in, I'm going to hold on with my right thumb and index finger and immediately drop the piece between my index finger and second finger. So hold here, drop here and drop up here and come away. So again, it's going to look like this. Here, here. Okay? So that's exactly what's happening. That's the move. It's a killer. So you can pull the ends off. And there you have it. Super move. Incidentally, um, if, you, if you're not comfortable putting it in your mouth, and you could be working at a restaurant or somewhere where it's not appropriate, uh, you can tuck it into your belt like this. Do the routine. When you need the ends, again, same move, except you're just grabbing here and pulling. Uh, by the way, when you're doing it here, you want to pull it a little um, with a little more force because it tends to stick, so it pulls out slower to get the illusion perfect. Uh, you want to pull it out quickly so that it just appears like that. Okay? I'm going to throw on a jacket. I'm going to leave frame for a moment. And now I'm mysteriously back. If you've got a jacket on, you can throw the loop up here so the ends are sticking out. And same move, show the endless loop. Vumpa, 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 vumpa. Then come over grab and pull, and it's a super visual move. And the place I like to use this is when you pull the ends off, uh, well, we'll just put them there for now, and then show the loop. You can go do a couple of uh, moves you want to do here. You can say, oh, I, I even have an, an extra set of ends here. Put those on, show. Um, this, of course, is using a move previous in fiber optics. Then you can make the ends go back on. I'm giving you a couple of examples like that. And then come over and grab these ends and put them on. So there's a lot of options open to you uh, in the fiber optics experience. Enjoy. And here's the false count from in front, there's one, the switch was done, there's two, and there's three. Pull, boom, all three ropes. Okay, this is the simplest way to um, make the ends of the rope the same size. It's a standard uh, professor's nightmare switch, but it's really practical in a lot of situations, and I like to use it, so I'll explain it. Uh, you've got the three ropes, the small, the medium, and the large, with about... Uh, one or two inches sticking up from the top. 
you're going to grab the small piece, bring it over here, and simultaneously, I actually grab it um, between my index finger and thumb to put it here because I'm going to grab this piece with my thumb and first finger. This piece will be the long end. And I, Oops, that should not have fallen out, but it's okay. I tried to escape. Uh, so I bring it around here behind it and immediately grab this and bring it out here. So right now that uh, short end is actually up here and this is the uh, end of the long end held down here. It looks like you've just moved the short end up here. I'll show you that again. So you do this. And in the action of counting it goes completely unnoticed so you do this. One more time, this, and that's your position right now, okay? I then in continuation bring the uh, medium end up and then the long end. And they're separated between the fingers like this. So now when I grab these, this is the position, and I pull, I'm actually stretching all the ropes together. That's a position up there. And now I can grab the ropes here and go into my false count, which is explained on fiber optics on the rest of the DVD. So what it looks like from the front is this. It looks like you've just wrapped the rope around the other rope and now normal. Here's a great little move, uh, a, pr a great move to throw in as a way of adding the ends back onto your rope. Um, this was popularized by Daryl, Tabari, and a number of other magicians. Um, here's my little variation on it, um, and here it is. That's a great little piece to throw into your routines. So let's, let's imagine you pull the ends off, and uh, so you're going to add them on. What you're going to do, it's going to look like you take the ends, and just um, twirl them around the rope and just hold it like that. Then come away this way. And then slowly swing and they see that the ends are actually part of the rope. Very magical. Um, and here's how you do it. So you're holding your two ends like this. Uh, by the way, I'll explain. I never hold the ends like this. This is a no-no. To me, this is a dead giveaway of your gimmick. Always hold it this way so it looks like two ends. So. Here's the position here. I'm going to come over from behind towards the spectator and throw the end over the middle. Throw this piece over the middle like this. I'm going to come up and around again. So around again. As I reach here, I'm going to now let go here and grab this piece. And my left hand is going to immediately come up and just give this a little tug and I'm going to stay there. That's going to keep this balanced. Now I can take this end here and all you have to do is slowly let them fall apart and they're part of the rope. So what you're doing of course is just switching the ends. So one more time is once around, twice around, let go, grab here, come out here, hold them, balance, grab this end, slowly let them fall apart, showing the rope. The ends and the middle will change places. Whoa, how does, what do you mean by that? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to hold the ends here and the middle here. Watch this happen. There's the ends. There's the middle. The way this works um, is you're going to do your end switch. Come down over here. You've got your ends here. This, uh, the fake ends here. Here's your uh, real ends over here. They think it's the middle. What I'm going to do now is reach down. Look, I'm going to turn my hand, and with my index finger and thumb, I'm going to grab the rope underneath. Not the one closest to my fingers, but the one on the bottom here. And pinch both of them. Because what I'm going to do in a moment is let go with all my fingers except those pinched pieces and twist to show the ends. So we're going to start with that hand action again. So I'm here, 
reach down, pinch both pieces, and show. That's one hand. The other hand is going to basically do a move um, that is this. You're going to hold your finger. You're holding the ends between your index finger and thumb. I'm going to pull my second finger in to pull these ends in as my index finger pushes out to push the middle out. So you're actually switching the ends for the middle visibly. This is a move I first saw, I believe it was Majax in France do, published something like this in the early 80s where you um, make a rope look like it restores by doing this. So here what I'm doing is moving this in and pulling out. At the same time, I'm doing this. So it looks like the ends actually change, ends in the middle visibly change places. So here, get ready over here. Now do the move here and show this. Okay? The timing is important here because what you want to do here is get ready over in the right hand, over here. Because I almost, uh, I almost start to do this move before I do this. So it looks like this. This takes all the misdirection and allows me uh, the misdirection I need to pull this back in and they change places. To clean up, come over here, pull this end out, and show, like so. The visible ends in middle changing places. This is my variation on John Cornelius' sliding knot. Any work by John Cornelius, you should check it out. Some really creative thinking. What I've done in this particular, in this in the sliding knot, is added a little twist, which allows you to slide the knot and then immediately let the spectator untie it. So there's no switching of ends, and you don't have to untie it yourself. It's, I believe it's much stronger if the spectator can untie it. So here's the work behind it. You're in a position. Um, again, this could be added to your routine at any point. It could be used as a separate thing. Uh, you're in the position where you have three ropes. And if I want to take a slight variation or routine, you've just made all uh, different size ropes the same size. You say, here, would you hold on to that one? I give them one piece. Of course, I'm in this position with a small piece around the long. I say, look, I'll make these two into one. Boom. I say, look, you've examined that rope. Um, so I tell you what, uh, take a look at mine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch. Uh, I'm going to take their end. I'm going to place it here in my hand underneath that short piece, like so. And then I'm going to grab the long piece by the middle, pull it up, and give it to them, still holding the short piece here in my hand. So what I've done is I've actually transferred the short piece from the long rope to the medium rope, where I want it, and they get the illusion that they've examined the medium piece and the long piece. And I'm in perfect position to do the sliding knot. So again, in actual speed, Real simple. There's a long rope with the short piece on top. I say, well, I'll tell you what. You've taken a look at this one. Here, why don't you uh, take a look at this one as well? And I hand it to them. And now I keep this here. They've examined both. I say, I'm going to show you an impossibility. Watch. I'm going to take the two ends and tie them together. What you're doing here is you're going to switch this end around here. Here's the move. We'll do it in close-up in a moment. But you're going to basically, it's the end switch, except instead of being here, you're going to hold them out like this so it looks like two ropes. In reality, of course, it's this rope around here. Okay. The move itself is this. Underneath, when you come to here, you're going to re-grip on this piece, let go of this. Hold these out like this and tie them in a knot. Really what you're doing is you're tying, the short piece is now tied around this rope. And that's the end right here. Hold it like this and say watch. And very slowly milk this for all it's worth. Move that knot across the rope. You're altering reality, so to speak, because you just tie the rope together, you're moving the knot. Here's where my variation comes in. I'm now going to grip this end of the rope in between my two fingers, index and second and hold it here. Because I'm going to come over with my kind of extended index finger and my thumb, and I'm going to grab the nearest piece. 
between my thumb and the top of my index finger. And I'm going to pull like this. You can stop at points and then regrip and pull again. But I'm basically going to pull till I get right here. And then I'm going to not lose hold of that grip. Instead, I'm going to let go of the second finger and first, and index, like that. So it looks like I've just moved the end all the way to here. But in reality, I can immediately go to the spectator and have them untie it. Because what they will find here now is just the two pieces. So let's do that again. From here, switch ends over to here. Show it here. Pull to here. Show you just move the knot. This gets clipped here. Index finger and thumb are free to grab this piece. Pull to here. Let go of the index finger and second finger. And nothing has changed as far as the spectator is concerned. And yet you can have them immediately untie the piece right here. And they will find, of course, two separate pieces of rope. Very magical. In actual speed, it looks like this. Look, I'm going to tie the two ropes together right here. So you see the point where these two ropes are tied together. There is no doubt. Watch this. I'm going to move the unmovable. Boom. Now that's crazy. But here's the craziest part. I'm going to move it right back. Can you untie the rope, please? And that's it. They untie it straight away. And you're back in perfect position. They have untied the rope at the point, And they see there are just two pieces of rope. It's an impossibility of just performed. To carry on with the rest of the routine now, I want to get back to the uh, long rope with the short piece on it. So I say, I tell you what, I'll hold on to this one. And I'll put this one away. I just do the move in reverse. The medium one goes away. I'm left with the long one with the short piece on top. And you can carry on with your routine as per normal. And that is the sliding knot. All right, I would like to explain to you now, uh, this is actually a move by Flip. Uh, by the way, um, real, uh, Flip has been a real inspiration for me in uh, performing uh, rope magic uh, early on in the 80s, actually, uh, is when I first saw Flip uh, performing uh, his rope magic, and it's inspired me ever since. Absolutely creative, wonderful, cool rope magic. Um, so this was a move that uh, uh, Flip's, it's, you show an endless loop of rope, like so. You say, with a rope with no ends, it's very difficult to get a knot. Which is very strange. Don't worry, I have extra ends. I'll put them on. And now I can undo the knot. So his move was basically getting a knot onto uh, an endless loop. And so what it looks like is showing your endless loop. The way to do this, you do an endless loop move. You're going to come over and twist. Now, you're going to grab from the front and twist over towards you. You're going to get a figure eight. Okay? Uh, so, twist towards you like so. At the same time, I'm going to reveal this. This finger kicks up so that this end is visible. So, you're here. Okay? So, it isn't visible towards the audience. But you're going to come over. So, once you've twisted here, you're going to come over and pass that end through the loop. 
like that, and then regrip it here and kind of come away. And when you do, you're going to end up with a little knot or what looks like two loops together. If you pull here, the loop is solidly on the rope. Now this is a great spot to do some of the other moves in fiber optics. Uh, I love doing, I like doing this because it gives um, a reason to get extra ends. So for instance, if you're at a point in your routine, let's say the ends in your pocket, you did the, uh, we'll start from the beginning, you did the endless loop and boom, now you had a knot in it. Well, the only way to get rid of the knot is um, to get some ends. So you put your ends on so that you can undo the knot. Perfect reason to get the ends back and do some fun stuff. So um, the way I use this in a routine is pretty much like that. At some point, the ends come off, goes in the pocket. So when I show an endless loop, um, I'll do the move. I'll say, if you have no ends, it's very difficult to get a knot. That's strange. See, there's no way to get that knot off unless, of course, I grab those ends, put them back on the rope. So now I've just done the move from fiber optics where you actually grab nothing out of your pocket. You just put some fake ends on. But now you can undo the rope. And then from here as an example, you can explain it works with static and you go through this move. Boom. Rope solid again. Don't worry. I have some extra ends. And whammo. You're on your way with the routine. So that is the knot in endless circle of rope. Very cool. So from the front, it looks like this. I'm going to tie the ends together right there. And I'm actually going to cut the rope with my fingers. Watch. So here's your starting position, standard starting position with the little rope held here, going over the hand, and the other end held here in your left hand. So you're going to tie a knot, supposedly. You're going to tie these two ends into a knot. In the process, you're going to switch, and here's how you're going to do it. The little piece goes over the big piece in the left hand cross. You come around, clip this here for a second, and come back here to grab the rope. And in a continuing action, grab here. And now it looks like you're about to tie the two ends together. Let's do that again. So, one, so, uh, one, two, three, four. So now you're holding this piece here. This is actually the small piece, but if you hold it like this, it looks like the two ends of uh, the piece of rope are getting ready to be tied into a knot. You then tie this into a knot and pull, like so. You can give it an extra pull. This is your position at this point. You're now going to supposedly pull the loop through your hand. In reality, what you're going to do is pull this knot down to about here, um, or further down, however far, far you want to pull it. And you're going to use your whole hand. It's going to look like this. It looks like you've just pulled the rope through your hands. When you're in the position you want, you're now going to get ready to cut the rope. And here's how you're going to cut the rope. This is a really deceptive move, and it's fun to do. As you say in a moment, I'm going to cut the rope. You're going to come over with your left hand, grab about this much. You're going to come up and just kind of fold this into your hand like this. So you come up, it bunches up, and you literally just put it into your hand like that. It's kind of held with my thumb and first finger there. So here. So just like this. Whatever is a comfortable amount that you can put into your hand, you're going to do so. Okay. Now from the back, it looks really crazy, but I'll show it to you from the front. Now, here's what's going to happen. You're now going to take your fingers, and you're going to come down about that much, and you're going to look like you're going to snip this piece. 
What's going to happen, though, when you snip, two things are going to happen simultaneously. One, I'm going to, notice my thumb is up here on that bunch. I'm going to hold that piece against my finger. And I'm going to drop everything else. So what's going to end up happening is this is going to drop here. And this is going to drop here. Because everything drops except for that piece. So it's going to look like it got cut right there. I'll show you now. This is what it looks like. So here to here, you see I'm going to cut the rope. Watch. And it looks like you've cut the rope. I know it looks a little confusing. Bear with me. Look. So you say, look, I'm going to cut the rope here. That's the move. Hold on here. And again, cut here. Let go of everything except for that piece. And it looks like you cut the rope. So from head on, you're going to tie the rope solid. Take your loop. You're going to pull the end up, the, the knot up, and pull through. Second phase, you're going to pull out like that. And the third phase, you're going to throw it on like that. When you untie, you come over, untie the ropes, and pull them apart. Here's how you do the ring and rope moves. Okay. So, first thing, you have your ring, your extra piece held in the right hand like so, as per the regular routine. You're going to come over, place the end on top of the piece in your left hand. You're in this position. Come around to here. Let go and just kind of pinch this. So here's exactly what I'm doing. I'm coming around and just kind of pinching it in between my first and second finger like that. Let go and grab this. So it looks like this. I immediately grab here, so I'm holding on to the, the actual small piece. This is the small piece. The other ends are held here. So we'll get into that again like this. Watch. Looks like this. I then make a knot with this and pull tight while holding on here. So this is my position. Now, I just pull this knot down to about here. But in reality, when the audience sees it, it looks like you're pulling the rope through your hands. They don't understand that the knot has traveled down to there. So it's a great illusion. Now, uh, I get the ring, hold it. I tap the knot. I say, that's magic slip knot. As that's happening, I just let the rope fall. I'm holding it really between my index finger and first finger like that. This is going to be your position for all the ring and rope moves. Okay. So there's a little piece sticking out there, about an inch or so. Say, that's the magic knot. I come back, my fingers open slightly to put that in, and then I grab here. I'm actually wrapping my index finger around the ring, okay, like this. So again, here, pull, and I pull the, the end with my thumb, wrap my index finger around like that, so from the front, it just looks like I'm holding the ring. Okay? And it's all done very casually. You say, there's the knot, uh, and now I reach up to grab the knot, and it's held there in that position. Okay? I then bring the knot up through the ring. This is, a, kind of, this is a really cool visual move. I bring it up through the ring. I'm going to now pull the ring here, but at the same time, I'm going to let go and let the ring fall onto the rope from here. Okay? So I'm going to show you that. It's very difficult to do this in actual slow motion, but it's happening like this. So I grab here, bring the knot up. As I pull, 
I'm going to let go of everything except this little piece which I'm going to hold here. So it looks like this. Watch. And it looks like it passes right through the ring. I'm going to do that one more time in actual real time. Looks like this from behind. So, there's the magic knot. Watch. All I do is pull it up through the knot. And it's on there. You're now in this position. The ring is now on the rope. Here's your position. To bring the rope, to take the rope off, I'm going to grab the ring here, pull it up like this, up to this position, hook this on here, and pull it through. And in continuing action, come up so the knot looks like it just passes through. Let's do that one more time. So here, this is your position up here. Bring the ring up. Bring the ring up so you're pulling the whole rope up like this. Come over here. Pull through like that. If you want, you can do this with a spectator. You can have a spectator hold out their hand say, bring the rope up here. Say, can you hold out your hand, please? Come over here to hold it. And what I've done is I've wrapped it around the ring like this and covered it with my finger, my index finger and thumb here. So it looks like I'm just holding it. They grab it, and now I just pull, and it comes through in their hand. So again, that looks like this. This is already on. I say, please, hold out your hand. Perfect. Hold on to the ring. They hold it. I'm in this position like this. When they hold it, I grab here, pull, pull it right through their hand, and they're left holding it. So, here we go. You've got your ring here. You're going you're gonna to visually throw the ring onto the rope one last time. Again, same position. Come over here. Loop it on. Immediately grab here. Now, it looks like you're just holding this casually. I'm just holding this here. Again. Uh, between my, uh, wrap my finger around it. You don't even have to. You can just come over and hold it like so, real quick. And you're going to look like you're going to toss it right down the middle to where that knot is. And all you're going to do is just toss, let go of everything except this point here. And it's going to fall onto the rope. Let's do that again in kind of a real-time performance. So there's the ring, there's your position, you grab here, grab here, throw. Immediately links on. Very, very visual. Now to untie the knot, here's what you're going to do. You're going to come over, you're in this position, you've just ended it, you just had it link on here. You're going to come over and you're just going to pull apart, you're holding on here to the action. hand. You're going to, with your index finger and thumb, you're going to pull this knot apart. What you're going to end up with is this is the short piece. So once you get to about this position, you're going to grab this and let go of this original piece here and pull them apart so that it looks like you've untied the rope. From behind, to take the ends off the rope, you're going to do the lickety split move from fiber optics, blickety split end switch, and just pull it straight off here like so. And that's the moves. Well, there you have it, folks. We got through it. Fiber optics. There's a lot of material on there. Uh, and you can tell because look how far apart I'm holding my hands. It's like the people that catch a fish. You know, they usually exaggerate slightly, but I'm not actually exaggerating. I'm desaggerating. Really, there's this much material. But I didn't want to go out of camera frame, so I did this. I'm working for you guys on this, okay? Okay. So, a lot of material covered. Um, remember, uh, the most important thing here is uh, find your own groove. Find your own thing. I have a certain way of performing. It might work for you great. But uh, what you want to do is just have fun with the magic you do. So that's the most important thing. When you're working for people, just 
Just be yourself and have fun. And if you can't do that, uh, be me and be miserable. Um, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, don't forget, when you're doing magic for people, always have a big smile like this and uh, say things like, I accept tips. Hi, I'm Richard Sanders. No, 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 seriously. Um, I am. Now, what we're going to do today is fun. I don't want to talk about serious stuff. I want to have fun. Fun. Like, look, look at this. See this chair? That's fun. See how you move like this? <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm done. Now, I'm going to talk to you about fiber optics today. This is, without a doubt, one of the coolest things that I do. I perform professionally for people all the time. And if I had to explain what fiber optics is, if I had to describe it in a couple of words, the words I would use are eye candy, eye candy, eye candy. This is real visual impossibilities for people. And I think what differentiates fiber optics from the other rope routines out there is this is really almost a commando routine. You've got the tools here. You can either use the routine as I provided or you can put together your own routines. But you have the tools to create an incredible piece of visual magic that you can do anywhere, anytime. You start clean, end clean. There's no angle problems. This is a real world worker. Uh, that I've been using for well over 10 years in my performance career. It's beautiful for like walk around gigs, uh, table hopping, cocktails, that kind of thing, uh, where you want to create magic for a larger group of people, not just one or two people. Um, fiber optics, perfect. I've had 50 people, 100 people around me watching in cocktails sometimes. So um, sit back, relax, get ready for a real juicy ride and we will get down and dirty with fiber optics. I'm Richard Sanders again, really, I swear, signing out. Um, so welcome to the Easter egg. I'm Richard Sanders, and this is the Easter egg. Bum, bum, bum. This is where we have some <laughs> music happening, man. <laughs> Easter egg. Of course, I wouldn't be spitting as I'm saying it. It would be actual effects. Hope that's not on. I hope we have actual effects. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, good. Yeah. Oh, strawberry. Hi, my name is Richard Sanders, and today we're going to do something a little bit crazy. Um, how many people here like card tricks? <laughs> Bummer. We're going to be doing a rope trick. <laughs> I'm going to give this out to be examined to somebody. Uh, gentleman over here, you don't look too busy. Please, there, would you examine it? Thank you. And, uh, in fact, I have another piece of rope, a little bit smaller. Uh, would you examine that one as well? And I need kind of a big guy, real macho man. You, sir, perfect. Um, huh, that one's for you. <laughs> Go crazy. 
There we go. Uh, you're examining the ropes. You're actually biting yours. Give me that back. That's a little strange. Uh, you've examined this rope, and of course you ex have examined this rope. Three ropes examined by three very strange people. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to create the illusion that these three ropes are the same size simply by doing this. See? Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's the lighting. Hold on. If I put it in the right lighting, it almost seems like the ropes are the same size. Check it out, really. If you look at them, uh, this end here, this rope here, is the same size as this rope here, which is the same size as this rope here. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe this is too confusing. Too many things. Let me get rid of one of the ropes. We'll just do the trick with two ropes. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's use one. That's probably going to be easier. <laughs> in fact, if you just missed that a second ago, I had two ropes. And then from those two ropes, we made one. Wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe it's too confusing. Again, you know what? Forget about the, uh, the rope itself. Just watch the ends. In fact, watch this end shoot up my sleeve. <whistles> Around the other side. <laughs> that tickles. That's weird. Let's send the other end across. That's the second end, and that's the middle. Again, confusing, <laughs> because you're not sure what to watch for, and it's happening quickly. Let me show you how that trick happened in slow motion. Here's what happened. I threw the middle over to here. Then I took the ends, and you'll see it in slow motion, and they traveled down here, like so. <laughs> okay, again, too confusing. You know what? Forget it. Let's just use... Oh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Um, let me put those away. No one saw... Oh, wait. <laughs> now I just have a loop. <laughs> in fact, sir, can you just say stop right there? Perfect. I'll get the ends, and I'll put them back on the rope. So we're back to normal. Or are we? Because, you see, this works with static electricity. Look, I get a little static over here, a little static over here, and the two ends join. <laughs> That's weird. Don't worry, I'm a professional, though. That's right. I carry extra ends. Let me find a good spot right about there. See, we can put the ends back on. <laughs> In case you missed that, a second ago, we didn't have ends. Then I took the ends and we put them on. Remember, we had no ends. And then I took the ends and I literally just threw them onto the rope. Okay, <laughs> forget about the ends, because the ends aren't the thing to worry about. It's actually the middle. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, let's take that middle. I'll put it right there. That's perfect. And you can see it drop right back on the rope, leaving a solid piece of rope. But you remember, this is an illusion. In fact, an illusion with one, two, three pieces of rope that you examined at the beginning. They were three ropes of three different sizes. And as you can see, this is the small one, um, this is the medium one, and this is the long one. Again, maybe you can't tell. It's the lighting. Um, here, look, look, look. Uh, I'll hold the medium piece here. Uh, I'll hold the long piece over here. See? And I'll hold the short piece right here in the middle. Look, I'll break the illusion. Now, there's a short piece. There's a medium piece. There's a long piece. That's the trick. Elevator down, please. My rope. Here's what we're going to do. You give this rope out to be examined. It can be examined by anybody, including small animals. If you'd like, you can have a dog chew on it, and they'll find it's, it's quite fresh. You then say, uh, look, we need some scissors. <laughs> I think I brought some with me. Um, actually, it doesn't matter. We don't need scissors. I'm a magician. Why don't I just take the, my two fingers and just cut the rope? Two ropes. Actually, they're not the right size. Um, let's start over. This will be better. I forgot. When I cut the rope, I have to cut them exactly in the middle. That's perfect. See, now when they're cut exactly in the middle, you can actually restore the rope quite visually with just a regular piece of rope. Now you have to be careful when you're doing a trick like this because always remember that the ends need to be here and not here. Er, hold on, wait, this end is here. That's the middle. <laughs> you see what happened is sometimes the ends in the middle switch places and I don't realize it. Um, well, I could show you how that happens in slow motion. Watch, slow motion, ends, <whistles> middle. Kind of strange. You know what? Maybe we'll let's forget about the ends. It's too much to follow. Let's... <laughs>
Sorry, that's embarrassing. Let me put the ends here. Uh, we'll just, oh, great. Now, <laughs> that's great. We can't even, uh, can someone just say stop right there? Perfect. I'll grab the ends, put them back on the rope. Of course, now I can't uh, do too much with it. Let me show you how this works. This is static electricity. Get a little static on each end and they weld together. Hold on. I'm a professional. I've got extra ends. Find a good spot and put the ends right back there. That's perfect. <laughs> so now the ends are exactly where they need to be. Sorry. <laughs> Let me throw the loop onto the ends. That's perfect. Now, uh, whenever you're doing this, never ever remove the ends. Oh, no, it happened again. Look, I'll just throw the ends onto the rope like that. That's probably easier. But whatever you do, remember, never ever have the ends on the wrong spot because then you have to take them and put them up to the right spot. See, that's better. The thing about this whole thing is not really the ends that bother me. It's the middle. Coming off. Look, let me put it back. See, that's a good spot. And now it's good as new. But remember, this is a trick with a piece of rope that was examined by the audience. And very slowly to finish, I'll put it in my pocket. Say the magic words my father once told me when I was a young boy. And look, the ends come back leaving just the middle. Svetlana! Um, so, welcome to the Easter Egg. I'm Richard Sanders, and this is the Easter Egg. Bum, bum, bum. This is where we have some <laughs> music happening, man. <laughs> Easter Egg. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't be spitting as I'm saying it. There, there would be actual effects. Hope that's not on. I hope we have actual effects. Mmm. Mm. Good. Yeah. Oh, strawberry. Hi, I'm Richard Sanders. You're about to witness an illusion with a borrowed finger ring. This is anybody's finger ring. Watch. You take the ring, put it in your hand, get a magic marker. All you do is that. The ring is gone. Nothing in the hands. But the ring isn't just gone. The ring has reappeared. Even though I haven't moved from this position, your borrowed ring is tied to my shoelace. That is your borrowed ring. This is not a duplicate. That is the spectator's ring. You come over, you very fairly untie the ring from the shoelace, pull it off, give it to the spectator, and you have a miracle on your hands. The anytime, anywhere borrowed ring on shoelace.